maybe human beings' brains are just wired so that we all like ice cream. Okay, in that case, all of us have desires for this thing. All of us would agree ice cream is good. That's possible. Nothing, nothing Hobbes says rules out that possibility. Um, okay, I want to emphasize one other thing about this subjectivism. So there's a subjectivism about values. But Hobbes is going to try to build on this foundational subjectivism. He's going to try to build an objective account of morality, or maybe political morality. He's going to try to argue that certain moral principles are objectively correct, that people are making a mistake if they reject them. And he's trying to build that on a foundation of subjective values. Um, so this is going to be sort of like the story that, that we were just discussing, where there's going to be agreement, we're going to try to establish agreement about <coughs> moral principles on the basis of this kind of subject. Um, okay, pleasure. So one of the problems with talking about happiness is that um, it's, um, it's a little bit confusing because it involves other satisfaction of other desires. But pleasure, Tom says on page 29, um, toward the bottom of the page there, Pleasure, therefore, paragraph 11, pleasure, therefore, or delight, is the appearance or sense of good. Okay, so what's good? Good is something that I have a desire for. And so when I accomplish that end, when the goal that I have a desire for is achieved, that generates, he says, essentially, a feeling of pleasure, of satisfaction. Now the important thing that I want to emphasize is that pleasure itself is not the only thing we desire. To be sure, that sensation is something that we have a desire for. But we have other desires also. There are other ends or goals that we try to accomplish, and as it were, as a byproduct of accomplishing them, we have a feeling of pleasure. So Hobbes is not saying that the only thing we desire is pleasure. Hobbes is saying pleasure is something we get when we accomplish the things that we desire. And the things that we desire are lots of different things. Whatever it is that a person can desire, whatever ends a person moves toward. Okay, and he goes through another of uh, another series of definitions here that I'm going to skip over on page 30. Um, I just want you to note paragraph 22 where he talks about desire of good to another. This is benevolence, goodwill, charity, he says. So the desire for the good of another is a what? It's kind of a second order desire. I may have a desire for your good. What's your good? The satisfaction of your desires. So I can have a desire that your desires be satisfied. And Hobbes, I think Hobbes says, rules that out. So this is relevant to a debate in the secondary literature about whether Hobbes should be understood as a psychological egoist or not. Psychological egoism says that as a matter of empirical psychology, as a matter of, you know, whatever, brain science, we are only able to act in our own self-interest. As a psychological matter of fact, 
human beings only act in their own self-interest. Now, obviously, everything here depends on what we mean by self-interest. Um, if self-interest is contrasted with acting for the benefit of someone else, well, then this kind of passage makes it look like Hobbes is not. He thinks that we can, in fact, act for other people's good. Of course, we ourselves will call that good, too. We have a desire for the satisfaction of someone else's desires. But the end that we have, the goal that we have, is the satisfaction of their desire. We call that good because we have a desire for it. That could be. But that could be. We're about to talk about instrumental values. So will this. Right. But at least this passage makes it look as though we can have we can have the unmotivated desires that we just find ourselves with for the satisfaction of other people's desires. Intrin no, it's not going to be intrinsic. It's going to be what I just called unmotivated. It's not going to be instrumental. I just find myself drawn toward a certain end. That end is the satisfaction of maybe one of your desires. Even without your own satisfaction? Well, look, uh, even without my own satisfaction. If I, if I accomplish that end, namely the satisfaction of your desire, that will be the satisfaction of my desire also. So I will feel pleasure and satisfaction. But this is why I was emphasizing before. The content of my desire, what I'm calling good, is the satisfaction of your desire. Now that desire that I have may be motivated by something else. That's what you're worried about. But maybe not. I just find myself with it, just as I find myself with the desire for ice cream. What about conflicting desires? Uh, right, so conflicting desires are going to be an issue. Um, all, all I really want to say about this now is, for Hobbes, one or the other will be stronger. That's the one that's going to result in our action toward the game. So this is why, this is why I said before, Maybe deliberation is something that's lacking here. But let's not worry about that at this point. Well, I will be confused. Okay. You know, what I was saying is that psychological egoism probably failed that there's supposed to be some view of game or you know, the instrumental value of the plan. But Hobbes is probably saying that you have the intrinsic value of helping somebody by the that means the, so I, I just need to interrupt you because intrinsic makes it seem like it's unrelated to my attitude. So what, and there's nothing that's valuable for Hobbes in a way that's unrelated to somebody's attitude. Whenever we say something's valuable, whenever we say something's good, we're always implicitly, or maybe explicitly, we're always implicitly relying on somebody having an attitude toward that. And what we're saying, strictly speaking, is not so much about that thing as about that person's attitude. Let's, let's move on, because this might help to talk about um, instrumental um, reason. Um, very quickly, on 33, he gives us a definition of the whip, middle of the page. Um, uh, paragraph 53 says, in deliberation, the last appetite or aversion immediately adhering to the action or to the omission thereof is that we call the will. Okay, so a will is just what? A vibration of our nervous system as the um, maybe intention works its way out through our nervous system to our muscles before we actually do it. 
Okay, the last one before it's expressed in behavior, that's the will. So the will is part of the causal sequence in the materialist, mechanistic picture that we've just been talking about. Okay, so we have to come back to that also. Okay, um, on 34, page 34, Hobbes says that um, when we have a desire for some end, for some goal, very often um, we will um, have to engage in a long chain of reasoning about how to bring that end about. And when there's a long chain of reasoning, if there's, there's no issue. If I have a desire to raise my hand, there's no long chain of reasoning involved. My hand just goes up. If I have a desire to become a doctor, it's a, it's a complicated thing. There are many steps along the way that I'll have to take in order to accomplish that goal. And so this long chain of reasoning about how to bring about a goal is something that, now this is important, we sometimes make mistakes. So, the, for Hobbes, the means by which we accomplish some end that we desire, the means are subject to rational assessment. The end is not. So I have some desire for some object. That just means I have an impulse toward achieving it. There's no rational assessment of whether that end really is good or not. To say it's good just means I have a desire. There's no further assessment of whether that desire is rational or not. But once we set an end, once we have identified something as good, now we can assess whether we are efficiently and rationally going about accomplishing that end. So our means, and sorry, and the point is that when there's a long complicated series of steps to accomplishing some end, sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we don't pursue the rational course to accomplish the end that we have. So one way to think about it is that these, the means, the steps along the way, are rational or maybe good in a derivative sense. They are rational or good simply because some end that we have uh, is the thing we have a desire for, we take to be good. There's no rational assessment of that. But once we posit that as a good or as an end, as valuable to accomplish, then we can assess the steps toward um, accomplishing that. So this is the account of instrumental rational, uh, instrumental reason. So reasoning is the calculation of the means to accomplish the ends that we desire. Maybe I said this one. Reasoning is the calculation of the means to the ends that we happen to desire. And unlike the determination of our ends, things that we happen to find ourselves drawn toward, this is something that's subject to rational assessment. We can decide, we can judge and evaluate. Look, when I say rationally, I mean we can make an objective determination of whether somebody is taking the necessary means to accomplish their end. This is because we can have objective knowledge of what causes what. We can have objective knowledge of what causal pathway through the world will result in the 
end that we just happened to design. And so this is, this is like scientific knowledge. The name that Hobbes gives to knowledge of the causal pathways to accomplish some arbitrary end is prudence. So, let me see if there are questions about, about that. Okay, um, and one more definition, I'll stop with this. Power is having the means to accomplish something. So, uh, sorry, that's on page 41. So power, here. so we can all agree that power is a good thing. It's a good thing because power just is the ability to, comp to accomplish whatever ends we have to have. The ability to achieve what we take to be good. We take something to be good, power is how we will accomplish. The knowledge that actually having the means to be able to accomplish it. Um, okay, so I'll stop here. Um, on Monday, um, there will be just a couple minutes still of um, instrumental reason before we get to the chapter 13, which starts the development of building uh, political society. In the uh, you should check Blackboard. Give me an hour. You should check Blackboard to make sure you're not doing that.